In today's take, I want to talk about the Los Angeles Clippers versus the San Antonio Spurs. I want to give you my pregame prediction. Please like, subscribe, also hit the notification bell, just so you get the newest and the bonus content first. We put out content every day, so you won't miss any content here. Let's just go ahead and jump right into this. So when I say the Clippers should beat the Spurs by double digits, I expect nothing less. I mean, honestly, you know, the Clippers are going to have to you know, the to me, in their mind, they have to understand when you come off a loss like that against the Bulls, where you know you could have came, where you know you could have beat that team, and you know you had that game. You gotta not only put that game in the past, but you gotta go into the next game and make a statement. And a lot of times, you know, when you come off a disappointing loss or something like that, a lot of times teams will come out and lag and they'll kind of like, you know, be sleepwalking through the game a little bit, especially if it's a team like the Spurs who they know they're better than and they're just, you know, they definitely could beat. Um, the Spurs do play hard and they do have, you know, players that, you know, want to win that, that are professionals just like you. So you have to come out there and take them as serious as you did the Bulls. And sometimes, you know, with the Clippers, I've always noticed is that, you know, sleepwalking during games and, you know, um, you know, blowing assignments defensively is something that they just th- those things just happen with the Clippers. And that's just something that they're going to have to get better at because, you know, um, coming, you know, going on the road in, in which the Clippers will have, you know, upcoming road games here soon, you know, in their schedule. The Clippers are going to have to mimic the same type of energy and gameplay that they do at home. The only problem is when you're shooting inefficient the way the Clippers do at times during games, it it really doesn't help you when you go on the road. And this is why I feel like the Clippers with all the home games that they that they have on their schedule, um they need to really take advantage of this and really get their rhythm to where they need to be because when it when it becomes a 5-6 game road trip, um if it, well let's hypothetically say it's a 6 game road trip, you don't need to go uh 2 and 4 on the road. You don't need to go three and three. You need to go four and two bare minimum on the road. Depend don't matter you know what I'm saying, no matter who the opponent is. Because well, I mean, I guess unless it's like a very, very elite team or something like that. But my point is you have to make the same you have to generate the same type of energy you do at home as you do on the road. And sometime with the Clippers they have a lot of to me the clippers have a lot of trap games to me because they have a lot of games where you look at on their schedule between the last year and even this year you know it's like they should have beat this team they had this team beat and the clippers are just living by the jump shot, dying by the jump shot. And that's the one thing that I, I, I fear with the Clippers because there's nights where you'll see Paul George have 30-something points, 35 points, it's a snap. But when you look at the stat sheet, he was 9 for 28 from the field. And Reggie Jackson had 21 points, but he was 5 for 19 from the field. And this is what I'm talking about. When, you, when the Clippers, when the schedule gets harder for the Clippers, they're going to have to find a way to be a lot more effective efficiency wise, shooting wise, especially when they're going on the road, because you don't have a crowd behind you and you don't have that extra you know, energy behind you because the crowd provides that. Now you have to provide, you know, amongst each other and yourselves and go against a crowd and the other team and sometimes the referees. So it's like. With all that being said, the Clippers have to be better on offense in regards into that in, in regards to that way, which will help them, you know, be a lot more formidable even as a road team as well. But my point is against the Spurs, they really shouldn't have none of that to worry about. Honestly, I think they should beat the Spurs pretty handily. Um, I think, like I said, I think they should beat them by double digits. Um I feel like the score is gonna be somewhere like one nineteen to one oh four. You know, um, Clippers, um, I think the Clippers should just handle them pretty easily. I think I think Paul George should have about 20, 25 points. I don't really think he needs 30 points, 30 plus points to beat the Spurs. Uh, Reggie Jackson should be efficient with having over 20. I think, um, you know, I keep saying Terrence Mann is going to have one of these big breakout games. I feel like this might be one of the this might be a breakout game for Terrence Mann. So definitely look out for him having like 25 plus points off the bench or something like that. Um I feel like Zubox definitely going to get maybe like twelve and twelve and fourteen a double double pretty easily. Um, I like Hardenstein coming off the bench. I like the way he chips in. I like his energy. I definitely think he'll probably get somewhere around eight and eight himself. Um, not sure 
um, when Marcus Morris is coming back or anything like that. But uh, hopefully when he gets back, hopefully, you know, he can, you know, get back to his old self. Well, maybe not his old self, but be a little bit more efficient and consistent. You know, Marcus Morris definitely inconsistent you know, uh, player, but he definitely has the talent to be more consistent. So that's why we, you know, we put a lot of pressure on him, but hopefully he comes back soon and, you know, plays well also. But my thing is, um, like I said, I feel like the Clippers should win tonight easily. And, um, I feel like they should just move on to the next, but, um, my next, uh, point out topic I wanted to speak about, um, was the Clippers next five games and how it could be a challenge for them. You know, the Clippers were on the seven game winning streak we talked about, but now you're playing the next five games, you know, without being on the seven game winning streak, the high. And now you have to come back down to earth. And sometimes when teams do that, they tend to play down to their competition. And if the Clippers go out there and play down to their competition in the next five games, they can find themselves maybe two and three or one and four, which I don't believe that's going to happen if they do exactly what I'm saying, which is be more efficient as far as shooting, but attack the basket is what the Clippers really need to implement. Attack the basket more. The Clippers are a really big team. When you look at Paul George, he's 6'8". You know, Reggie Jackson is probably like 6'3", 6'4". When Marcus Morris is there, he's like 6'6". Batum is like 6'9". You know, of course, Zubox is like close to seven feet or whatever. But they're really a big team. If they really just go out there and just attack teams and go to the basket and draw fouls and put teams in foul trouble early and set that tone and let their jumper just flow throughout the game periodically and let it, you know, let them catch their rhythm that way, the Clippers would be so much of a better team if they just played that way because honestly when you look at them the one of their Achilles heels without Kawhi Leonard that you notice a lot you look at the stat sheet Paul George will have 30 something points like I said but he'll be he'll shoot 10 for 29 and this is what I'm saying you're not going to beat good teams like that you're not going to beat teams like the Bulls you're not going to beat teams like the Nets you know you're not going to beat teams like that or maybe the Bucks when they're healthy or whoever the Suns you're not going to beat the good teams shooting like that because you're already down your main guy, so all the other guys have to pick it up because he's not there. And to pick it up, that means you have to shoot better, defend better, and be more aware of things that can happen within a game that can get you beat. And that's something that the Clippers are going to have to pay attention to. Now, the Clippers' next five games, the Grizzlies, the Pelicans, they play the Mavs twice, and then they play the Pistons. As I said before, they bare minimum – well – I'm going to say this bare minimum. They have to go three and two in the next five games. If the next five games, the Clippers go one and four or, you know, something like two and three, it's going to make you look at the Clippers and be like, well, can they really make the playoffs or not? Even though they're playing the Grizzlies and Pelicans, to me, that should be two wins right there. The Mavs, they should at least beat them once. And the Pistons, they should definitely run right through them. Um, Well, Honestly, they will beat the Pistons, I believe. So uh, we're we'll just go ahead and mark that off now. But my point is this, like, you know, the next five games after the seven game winning streak they had, you want to see what type of energy they bring out the next five games after this, because it's going to kind of tell you, you know, where the Clippers are. Are they are, are they mentally as resilient or as tough as we think they are or they're just going to start playing down to the competition and find themselves losing games that they shouldn't be losing and then a lot of people might start questioning their playoff chances and even though it's early in the season you got to go by what you see and what the product the team puts out on the floor for you to give your analysis off of it and these next five games for me specifically I want to watch these next five games closely and see how the Clippers go out there because I'd like to see them go out there and dominate most of these these games and go at least four and one in these next five games. I would like to see them go out there and just keep on doing what they're doing as far as, you know, having the mentality of we had the fighters mentality, we're resilient and there's nothing we can't handle. And I love that mentality of the Clippers. I just wish they had that mentality mentality along with being more attacking towards the basket, because sometimes I feel like the Clippers live by the three too much. And even when you play a team like the Pelicans, which is one of the five teams they play and in the next five games, even when you play a team like that, um, if your jump shot's not falling, you can be beat. 
And this is why I'm saying you don't want to start losing to teams that you know you can beat, you know you're better than, just because you want to go out there and showboat with the three. Sometime instead of Paul George and Reggie Jackson, you know what I'm saying, showing the handle, going through the legs with a step back three, why don't they sometime, you know, show the handle and get to the rim and be more in attack mode? Because one thing that you notice out of several games of this season already, between Reggie Jackson and Paul George, they've had some very, very inefficient shooting games they would have the numbers at on the stat line 25 8 and 8 but they would have like I said they would be shooting like 9 for 22 from the field and when you look at the game that they're playing the team that they're playing it came down to the wire or the game was way closer than what it should have been because you're shooting so poor and you're living with the three-point shot that's not falling for you and you're continuously doing it over and over and you're not attacking the basket and putting these games away, you know, quicker and, you know, more effective like you should when you're the better team. And that's something that the Clippers fall, you know, find themselves doing at times. Now, you can do a lot of that at home when you're, you know, on a six, seven game winning streak or when you're playing easier teams. But like I said, what about when the schedule gets harder, when you have a five, six game road trip and you're playing five plus 500 teams? Every single team you're playing is plus 500. That's when it's going to get tougher, and that's going to happen to the Clippers. They're going to go through that five, six-game road trip. So games like these, these next five games, is going to prepare them and push them more mentally to be ready for those type of situations because now, like I said, you, you, you as the season goes on, you're going to play more competition, whether home or away, but you want to be prepared to play good competition. So when you start playing those away games at the Nets, at the Bucks, or maybe at the Lakers, or, you know, at the Warriors and stuff like that, you'll be prepared, you know, for them games because you beat the teams you're supposed to beat and you executed plays at a high level to beat the teams you were supposed to beat and beat them in, you know, great fashion by double digits. And, you know, you, you didn't allow yourself to, you know, be beat by your own mistakes. You see what I'm saying? And that's the thing the Clippers have to implement in their diet. They have to implement those type things. And the main thing is, like I said, they have to start attacking the basket more because with all the size that they have and all their players just about, there's really no reason why they shouldn't be attacking the basket. I understand the fact that they've been the best three point shooting team the last what year or two or something like that but three-pointers are good but they're only good when they're falling when they're not falling well you know you tend to lose and attacking the basket mixing that with the three-point shot is going to make the Clippers the best team they can be because when Kawhi Leonard comes back or if he decides to come back or whatever you want to call it you know the Clippers need to be within playoff contention I don't think Kawhi is going to you know be so in a rush to come back if the Clippers are at least keeping afloat and they definitely have the team to do so and they definitely should and I definitely believe they will but there's going to be some hiccups in the road some big hiccups in the road for them if they don't don't find a way to, you know, fix some of the issues they have, because if, if your if your record is really good this season and you've predominantly played under 500 teams and dominate those teams, that's good. But what about when you play the really good ones, the teams who can have your number or the teams who can, you know, who has a, a, a superstar or a player on their team better than Paul George or as good as Paul George, then what it's going to be. And this is my point with the Clippers. They have to find a way to bring the same energy every game to every team, no matter who it is. Don't play down to your competition. And if the competition is so-called better than you, then play up to it. And that's just the way the Clippers are going to have to play. And these next five games is going to tell me a lot. So these are the games I'm going to be paying attention to. But hey, that's my take on the situation. Leave any comments in the comment section. Let me know what you think of all, as always. And um, hey, Cali out.